Hello and welcome to the Trent Valley Railway for the May 2020 layout update. This layout update is part one of two layout updates for this month as there's plenty more work to do and an update will be coming later on in this month. So in this update we'll take a look at the entrance to the container depot and I've now got in the next point across here and I've also got in the lines for the container depot so three roads. We'll take a look at the work I've been doing to remodel the incline approach to the scenery section for this piece here which will go inside there. And finally, we'll take a look at the latest DCC sound loco on the layout, which is this network rail class 08. Before I get into the rest of the update, I'd like to say a welcome to all the new subscribers to the channel. Please do continue to comment on the videos, provide feedback or your thoughts on the progress for the Trent Valley Railway. And we'll now get straight into looking back at some of the work I've done on the approach to the container depot. The first thing to talk about in this month's update is the progress I have made for the container depot and the entrance to it. So in the last update, I'd finished up to the edge of the baseboard where the join is and I've now got in the next point across here and I've also got in the lines for the container depot so three roads tested some of the locos here and also fitted the remote uncoupling units where I had three of those sat underneath the track there. I've infilled the cork around these as well. And then I've got as far as just the first piece of flexi track to the end of there. So there's more work to do going along the container depot here. But once I've now got that bit sorted and tested, which we'll see later on in the update, I've also progressed with changing the main running lines here. I've cut back the cork underlay that I'd already put down and I've now got these two foam incline risers down on the baseboard. One was slightly a different height so I've had to also put in a very smaller thinner piece of cork underneath that one and these then connect up to a short section then of plywood with the again some foam incline riser underneath that to get the right level as it then comes on to what will be a sort of embankment in the part of the Trent Valley here for these sections of then wood which I've cut down and these will continue along this section. So next job in this area now is to put down the cork underlay over the top of these sections here. And I'm also now going to start looking as well at the other end of the layout so that I can look at how this end connects up with the running line coming off the incline at the other end of the scenery section. I've been working on the incline which leads up to the scenery section at the very back of the garage here. So I've done these quite a while ago with coming round the corner there at the back right hand corner of the garage and along this incline. But the problem I had found whilst testing this incline section here was as the uh, trains were coming around that last corner, this incline was too steep slightly for the uh, length of trains that I want to run. And this was around about the 4% mark, as you'll see from this picture here. So I've then started to remodel this and lower the incline. And I've done quite a bit of work here already. And 
the first bit now comes into just below where the baseboard would have originally sat on this section here as it approaches the scenery section. I've had to cut away the excess bit so there's a slight gap, but that'll be filled over with the cork underlay. So I've had to cut away a bit of the old uh, inclined baseboards there. Take a bit of the uh, cork underlay back off and screw that baseboard back down to the incline. And then as it comes then onto this area here, I've used at the very back here now the sort of level of the timber frame that I previously built as the sort of level to come in at off this incline. So there's a slight bit of rise on the uh, first piece of wood and then it goes flat on the second piece of wood behind. Now this is all screwed down and I've also done the wiring underneath this as well now. So this all sits very nicely as it comes off the incline. I just mentioned that I've done the wiring, so these two DCC bus wires go now underneath this area here and underneath all of this framework as well, which I'll explain very shortly. But the bus wire goes to the back and there's uh, some terminal blocks there to eventually drop the feeder wires down from the baseboard above, which will be the very end of the container sidings. And I've already got the accessory bus wires and an accessory decoder in there as well ready to go and looking around the other side I've already got those wired up because it'll be a very very annoying area to access to try and get in around the back of there and screw all those in once I've put this top baseboard down so I now put this top baseboard down and I will show you the next steps then for this area of the layout so with this new lower section of the baseboard here and then the baseboard level here for the scenery section will be in two parts at this end. So there'll be a lower part which joins then onto this bigger baseboard section here which I've now cut out and left the space and also put in the uh, framing support for this piece here which will go inside there. So it's quite a snug fit but that's what I want and if we push it down there it then gives a second rise from the level here off the timber framework up to the main baseboard level to continue then along down to the other end and connect it with the work that I've already been doing and just to finish this off I've got another small piece just there because underneath that is the lighting for the fiddle yard so to make sure that that is all covered as well I've got a small piece there which that is slightly higher for that piece because you've effectively got a ramp down from the baseboard there down to the sort of level of the timber framework and then it will then go around the corner there and join in with the existing inclines. So I'm really pleased with how that has now turned out and the woodwork in that area is now ready to be uh, screwed down for the rest of it. I'll eventually screw down this very large baseboard here once I've drilled the holes for the uncoupler units that will go in there like the other end but otherwise I can then start to lay now down some cork underlay and continue the track coming off the incline and around onto the scenery section here. I've now got these baseboard sections screwed down here leading off the incline. This one is still loose as I've got to sort out the end of the container depot there with the uncoupling units. So the next job will be to use some of this spare cork underlay from the rest of the layout and lay it down coming around this corner here and up to about just before it comes onto this baseboard so I can carry on once I've fixed this baseboard down here. So I'll get on with that now and show you the uh, finished piece once those cork underlay 
strips are down on this section here. I've now got the two running lines coming off the incline and joining the scenery section. There'll be a few pictures as I talk through this just to show you the, the gluing down of the cork and the track. But as it comes off this area here, I've kept the sleeper spacing as per it comes as a flexi track for Pico. And then as it joins up onto the scenery board here, the spacing has then been increased. So as it comes around the corner there, it will join up eventually with the main running lines. Whilst gluing this down, I've also then added in some small pieces of card to the one side of the sleepers to give a bit of a banking effect as it comes around that corner and eventually in this area here there'll be a scenery partition between the running lines going left and obviously those that come then down onto the incline. So I'll come back at a later date and join up these lines here but for the time being I now need to work out uh, and go back to the other end of the layout to join up this end with the end that you saw earlier on in the update going into the container depot. The next part of this update I just wanted to explain the work in progress so far overall and then how this end leading in towards the container depot entrance and exit will join up with the other end of the layout. And so since going in between doing work on the other end but the very back of the garage and then doing the container depot entrance here I've been able to glue down the foam incline risers that were sat underneath some cork in this area as a sort of temporary measure and also get down the track so again very similar to the other end as these lines come along the track here I've put a bit of card underneath one side of the sleepers to give a bit of a uh, banking effect as it comes around the curves and it will start to move away then from the container depot so the container depot sidings are as I previously showed you they split into three and there'll be three container roads in there with the uncoupler units at this end and more uncoupling units at the other end and some buffer stops that whole container depot will then also have this shunt neck so I'll also eventually add a line off that point there and take it along the edge of the railway before it sort of goes down towards the very end of the baseboard there by the garage door. So if we now come back along the main line, these two lines here, I've been able to put in a length of flexi track and these then connect up into a short section of uh, baseboard. I've used uh, some spare Woodland Scenics foam incline riser there underneath to get the gradient correct and they then join in with these blocks of wood which I've cut out and if we just move these out of the way just for two seconds these are all spare pieces of wood that I had and have recycled from when I built the framework for this layout and these then carry on around a corner to curve back towards then the container depot ever so slightly and Similar to the other end, I've then got a small section of baseboard before they'll come back down on the incline towards then meeting up with the work that I've been doing down at this end at the very back of the garage. So this process here of gluing down both the cork and also the main running lines takes a little bit of time to get going and get sorted so unfortunately I think it'll probably be the next layout update where I'll eventually then have a full running line past the container depot because I've also got to put in the slidings at the very back and get all that fixed in at the same time as I do these lines coming down here so for this layout update I'll leave it here in terms of progress on the layout but what we'll end with here is uh, just showing you the new DCC Sound loco for this month and just showing a few shots of the trains 
probably just operating on this end of the layout here. This is the latest DCC Sound Loco for the layout. It's the Network Rail Class 08 Shunter in yellow here. So it's got a TTS Hornby Sound Class 08 decoder inside it. The sound comes out of the front grille of the Loco. So if we start this up, It's got quite a nice few functions on there, including some whistles. So we'll just see this running on the main running lines just in front of us here and then over the point work leading into the container depot. Thanks very much for watching and hope you'll join me again later in the month for another layout update to show the progress on the Trent Valley Railway.